Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Aircraft Post Rousseau Report. I'm your host, Dennis Rousseau. And today we're going to talk about the Phenom. Um, that's Allison Felix, by the way. Allison, if you know somebody that's watching, or maybe even you're watching, uh, congratulations from all of us at Aircraft Post for setting the world record. We're all proud of you. We're actually going to talk about Embraer's Phenom 100 their first clean sheet purpose-built business jet. The aircraft entered service in 2008, and 12 years later, there are now 422 in service. It fits in the VLJ category, along with Cessna's M2, the Cirrus Vision, and Honda Jet, among others. But before we continue, let's define VLJ. First off, it stands for Very Light Jet. Although it's been called a personal jet, entry-level jet, micro jet, the Eclipse 500 with first flight in 2002 was one of the first to establish this category. They typically have a gross weight of 10,000 pounds, plus or minus, seat four passengers, flown single pilot, have just under a thousand mile range, but in the early days, they did not have a lavatory. And the thinking at the time was, they'll be used for 300 to 500 mile missions and passengers can hold themselves, or dig this, they can bring a personal container I still haven't quite figured out what that is other than a urinal. Like any new aircraft, there are going to be design flaws, manufacturing delays, certification issues, and the Eclipse 500 seemed to cover them all. The manufacturing process is radically different than that of more traditional business jets. By way of example, the Eclipse 500 was designed to be, seriously, listen to this now. It was designed to build an entire aircraft in one day and install the interior in 45 minutes. And it was certified to 20,000 cycles and an unlimited calendar life, compared to the Phenom 100's 35,000 flights with minimum structural repairs or replacements due to fatigue. Most VLJs are going to burn under 100 gallons per hour while typically cruise in the mid 30s. In an already crowded market in 2008, along comes Embraer with their Phenom 100. But wait a minute. If we place the 100 next to the Phenom 300, one is a VLJ and the other a light jet. But they're near identical when looking at the nose and tail. And that's where Embraer takes the lead in the VLJ markets, which I'll circle back to in just a moment. The aircraft is very compact, standing 14 feet 2 inches high and just over 40 feet of wingspan to support the 42 foot long fuselage. It's powered by two Pratt & Whitney PW617F-E engines that provide just under 1,700 pounds of thrust per side, and they're controlled by Full Authority Digital Electronic Control, or FADEC. And the engines have a TBO of 3,500 hours, which can be covered, and most are, by Pratt & Whitney's ESP program that runs around $180 per hour per engine. Standard interior configuration consists of four singles and a club arrangement in the main cabin, that's about six feet long. Then you have the aft lav and either a single side facing seat or refreshment center opposite the entry door, which provides a total length of 11 feet. Now, circling back to the head-on comparison of the Phenom 100 and Phenom 300, the 100 is in the VLJ category and the 300 with its near 2000 mile range is considered a light jet. They share the same fuselage cross section, but the 300 is longer and can accommodate two additional seats in the aft cabin, just forward of the lav. And as you can see, with a near five foot cabin height and five foot one inch cabin width, the Phenom 100 provides ample room for a one to two hour mission. Before we step on board, you'll notice the air stair integrated in the main door that opens and closes with one hand. As we enter the cabin, facing us on the right hand side is a single side facing seat, or it can be replaced with a refreshment center. It can accommodate small beverage containers, ice, and snacks. Notice there is no water, whether it's the refreshment center or the lavatory. And the reason is each gallon of water weighs how much? Come on, 8.3 pounds. And even if we were to squeeze 10 gallons on board, that's 83 pounds, unless we forget, you've heard me say this before. In the tech spec, it clearly states, all, perform, all, all weight and performance data are for aircraft in a baseline configuration, no optional equipment. Takeoff and landing field links are for sea level hard surface dry runways with zero wind. 
then the range is 1175 nautical miles with four occupants at 200 pounds. Now notice I didn't say two crew and four passengers, four occupants at 200 pounds each. Long range crews and again, no options. Add options, you're going to be substituting for something else. But regardless of the aircraft, VLJ OEMs tend to push the range envelope. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. Who wants to sit in a VLJ for four hours? They're designed for a one to two hour mission. And speaking of which, the average stage length for VLJs is just a tad over an hour, like 1.2 hours per landing. Plus, at its certified ceiling of flight level 410, the cabin altitude is 8,000 feet. Your fuel burn is roughly about 80 gallons per hour, and your cruise speed is going to be Mach 0.6. You'll tire long before the aircraft, and if you want to go faster, like Max Cruise on the Phenom 100 of Mach 0.7, you'll have to drop to a much lower altitude. Let's continue. The fuselage is aluminum and has an oval light profile, and as such, Embraer tries to provide passengers with headroom right out to the sidewalls with a slightly tapering contour. There are no fuselage penetrations for the wing because it's mounted to the underside of the fuselage at five points. So a dropped aisle runs the length of the cabin and that's what provides passengers with a four foot, 11 inch headroom. As I mentioned at the beginning, all OEMs have their teething problems, albeit certification, avionics compatibility, or passenger comfort. And early on, Embraer installed a bare bones seat as seen on the left. And I think it looks very similar to an airline seat, which left a lot to be desired from a comfort perspective. So they changed out the passenger seats to the ones on the right that actually invite you to sit down. Now, before we continue, notice on the early models, they had a curtain that would cordon off the lab from the passenger cabin. I can still hear you. Probably not the best choice for passengers. So when they introduced the 100E variant, a hard pocket door replaced the curtain. Moving into the aft lav, we have a dry chemical, self-contained, removable toilet. And for those that spend considerable time doing their business, there's also a window on both the left and right side for your viewing pleasure. On a serious note, anytime you can add ambient light to any section of the cabin, it adds considerably to removing the consummate feeling of claustrophobia. And Embraer has done a fine job doing just that. For a VLJ, similar to Cessna's, the Phenom 100 has both an aft baggage compartment and no section. Both though are unpressurized. that can accommodate a total 60 cubic feet of luggage. The early 100s came standard equipped with the Garmin 1000 cockpit that's seen on the upper left that had three 12.4 inch active matrix LCDs, rebranded Prodigy, and was equipped with all the essentials, VHF comm, FMS, GPS WAS, satellite weather, TOS, cockpit voice recorder, and central maintenance computer, including health monitoring for engines. When the 100 EV was introduced as the next variant, the cockpit was upgraded with the Garmin 3000 as seen on the right, and was rebranded Prodigy Touch, incorporating three 14.1 inch AM LCDs. And as you can see, the gear handle had to be moved to accommodate two 5.7 inch infrared touchscreen controllers for data input. No more looking for switches and knobs. Everything you could possibly want has been integrated into these two screens, weather, charts, flight plan, aircraft systems. And for whatever reason you get lost, depress the nearest tab and it shows you the nearest airport. Press direct to and direct you go. Consider for a single pilot operation, the more you can integrate and automate, the better off the pilot is and the more it lends to safety. Another nice feature of the aircraft is the trailing link gear, which unless you screw up, makes every landing a smooth landing. So how's the current market for the Phenom 100? Of the 422 aircraft built, there are 17 on the market, representing 4% of the fleet with ask prices ranging from 1.2 to 3.9 million. And the latter is the ask for the latest variant, the 100 EV. There have been 14 transactions in the last six months with selling prices ranging from 1.3 to 3.4 million, showing an average 124 days on the market. The aircraft is maintained on an MSG3 schedule where you'll accomplish airframe inspections on a 12 month calendar basis, 
in 800 hour increments up to the 120 month, which is the major airframe inspection that also includes gear overhaul and runs just under $500,000. Now, before we sign off, we'll be taking the rest of August off for summer recess. And we'll see you back here in September when we start talking about maintenance, respective costs, and markets. How do you find a broker? How do you find the right aircraft? We've got some real exciting videos coming up, so please stand by. Now, without further ado, let's get on board our Phenom 100 and get out of town. Thank you for listening.